Okay, so final touches. Um, you know what it's like. You get the airbrush out, a few little touch-ups to be done. Uh, to be honest, when I was unmasking the actual cockpit area here, um, that what happened was I peeled a little bit of paint off. So I knocked up some of the original colour, and I thought, oh, I'll just pop round and put in some little bit of post shading. Um, and quite frankly, I think I've gone a little bit over the top. So. You know, I'm not a fan of this type of weathering, to be honest, but sometimes it's quite nice to just sort of let your imagination run away with you and you end up with something looking a little bit like this. So what she trying to show you and do at the same time is quite tricky. Um, so what we've got down here, for instance, I'm literally just making sure your needle is clean at all times. This is the secret to doing this type of work. It's the 0.2 needle, very, very thin paint, and the air pressure is quite low. And all we're doing now is literally getting nice and tight, and I'm putting in some lines going in, and we're just picking out little panel lines. And what I'm doing, to be honest, the ones which the wash didn't take because of the multiple coats of paint this has had, Okay, I'm using those as if this has had touches. Okay, so all we're doing, because it's quite thin paint, you have to go over it quite a lot. So as you might be able to see down the side here, we've got this sort of weathering effect going on. We're just trying to bleach out some of the panels. And to be honest, it's looking pretty heavily weathered here. So we've gone from being a nice and clean line jet to the cag bird, to sort of the line jet, to the end of the tour, perhaps. That's what I'm thinking with it, all right? But this is really where your sort of imagination can run riot. So I'm not a fan, really, of following a particular aircraft and things like that. I quite like just to go around and sort of think up little areas of where it's been if I'm doing this type of weathering. If you're doing um, standard type of weathering, perhaps that we've done with all the other builds and things like that, I tend to just try and keep it like a jet. So I'll look at a particular jet and I'll try and keep it as is. When I'm gonna go totally over the board and heavy weather, then that's where my artistic mind comes in. Don't forget, you know, it's a piece of art at the end of the day. So, you know, the definition of art is something that's totally useless. Okay, you can't use it. Well, you certainly can't use one of these. So you might as well let your imagination run wild with it. So it's up to you how you want to weather it. Now, I know you're going to get the rivet counters out there. are going to say, oh, but the jets aren't that dirty. You wouldn't see them like that. I worked on it. I'm not trying to get that type of thing. This is personal artistic license for me to think, right, okay, I can experiment one with my weathering I can put down things without ruining it totally and it turning to something horrible but it can look like a heavily worn jet maybe okay perhaps it's not perhaps in reality is they never got this dirty but you know I see a lot of armor which I should never think ever gets that dirty unless it's in a scrapyard okay every day of the week from the armor guys but they can use their artistic license to get away with it aircraft guys we tend to be put into a little bit of a box where you think you can't quite go that much with it it's unrealistic it's not correct and all the rest of it sometimes though you know I like to just push the boundaries just a little bit and think okay I'm doing it for me I want it to be that way I don't care what anybody else thinks it looks good to me and I'm enjoying doing it and that is the main point and that's how you should feel when you're doing it I know a lot of people this is where I'll go off on a rant now don't like talking in forums they don't like putting up their own work and things like that because of what people say really who cares you know, at the end of the day, if they don't like your work, then it's their problem, not yours. You obviously liked it from being up there, okay? This is this type of situation. I know I'm probably gonna get slated for doing this, but I'm really enjoying it now. And I'm sort of in that zone and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna weather it like this. I'm gonna do that to it. I'm hoping it's gonna look right at the end of being something quite heavily warm, okay? Without being totally over the top. But if it goes a little bit too far, really, does it matter? It's good practice, good techniques and everything else. And I can take what I've learned from this build on with your next one. Okay, rant over. So I'm just gonna literally pop round, pop a few more little of these guys in. Okay, just take your time with it. Don't worry about it if it goes a little bit awry and a little bit too much. Just enjoy yourself as you're putting down this weathering. Okay, if you get overspray onto decals, don't worry too much about it because in reality that's how it would be. You know, certainly roundels, things like that, and the, the numerous decals we've put on here. Be careful quite where we touch this, but like underneath now, you can see we're into this situation where you know we can't see a lot of these smaller decals down on here, but certainly you know you can still make them out, so they're still there under it. 
So I'm going to do just a few more to this one. As I say, we've unmasked, cleaned up the canopies. We get the canopies on. At the same time, I'm going to decal uh, and weather up the weapons, just as we've done this, to be honest. It's just going to have a wash, a little bit of post shading just around it, things like that. And then what we can actually do then is get it all fitted together. We can get the burner cans put on, everything else like that, for mounting onto the stand. Okay, so we're getting quite near the end, and uh, it's one of those things, looking at it now, just making a few little changes. So I just want to explain what we're doing. First of all, we put the refueling probe together, uh, pretty straightforward. It's all white, this back area is in silver, and then at the front. Now, looking at the reference photos to what you get, they're not exactly brilliant. Now, if you wanted to be a bit of a purist, you could reshape the actual front of the probe, because it's far too thin and tube-like. The other thing we've done is uh, we made a bit of a faux part at the back here. So what we've had to do is respray the back and respray this side as well because unfortunately when we unmasked it, it tore to pieces the actual deck underneath. Now you might be able to see we've got the little reflective mirror on the top there. Little tiny, tiny drop of PVA glue underneath just seals that into position. Weapons fit, as you can see, is now on. So we've just done PVA glued these uh, sparrows in. Sidewinders to the outer rails, as you can see, and everything else moving through. I'll just take this off. Now, when I was going through, you know what it's like. You're looking at your model and you're thinking, oh, it's all looking very good. And then I'm thinking, I don't know, it just needs something else. Now, as we know, we've been weathering this pretty extensively and everything else. My main problem I had to it was when I was looking at these wings and that, they're looking a little bit light. Now, you might be able to see this on here. All right, now, I know what you're thinking. That looks great and all mottly. Well, I hope you're thinking that. And down the side here, we've completely redone this. The reason I did it, I darkened it down with the black wash. The reason for it was, like the top of these wings is just looking a little bit too light. Um, and I don't know, it's a bit like when I did the uh, post shading with the lighter color, it sort of ruined the effect I was after. So to take the ball by the horns, what we're actually doing it is with black paint, all right? So literally, we're just coming along with the black wash and then gonna come in and just brushing it down onto our model, just like so. Okay, now don't panic about using the black, especially doing it this way, all right? Because I know a lot of people think it's too strong and too stark and everything else. There's a little technique we're gonna do with this, which we'll show you. All right, so we're just gonna pop this black down and popping it all on here. Okay, and you want it to be quite random as you're putting this down. Okay, and then you're gonna need it to dry off. Okay, but these lumps and bumps you can see all here, what we're gonna do is just mess it all up. We want it to be quite, I don't know, messy. I want a better word, but we just need it to be odd. But you've got to make sure you cover absolutely everything. All right, so what we're going to do now is leave that to dry naturally for around about five minutes. Okay, we know this will dry within 10 to 20 minutes. You'll be totally bone dry. What we want to do is take it off before it completely dries. This is how we get this sort of mottly look at the top here, because what it is, it's where it's wet and it's dry and everything else. The other thing that's working with us is because we've got the different types of paintwork that we've got down here, where we put the flat coat on absolutely everywhere, these areas in between the post shading are far flatter than the gloss we went over with doing the post shading. So those bits, it isn't gonna stick quite as easy and it should give us a very sort of decent mottled look to all the paintwork as I've done up here on this main part. You can speed it up as well. Normally I would always say, let this dry naturally. But to get this good effect, what you can do, turn your old air pressure right up, okay? And then just put your airbrush right over everything, just blowing air, just to dry this off. Don't use a hairdryer or anything with heat, 
Because what can happen is you can soften the paintwork, the paintwork goes soft, and then before you know it, you can be in a situation where it's actually ground into the paintwork itself instead of just sitting on the surface. So what we're trying to do now is just literally dry this off. So around about 70% is dry, but it's still wet in things like the panel lines and when you've got these patches, you know, these big dark patches you can see here, what will happen is with any luck, that will just wipe away and cause a clean spot. And it's these clean spots that are giving this mottly up here. So we're all going to just dry it off. And the reason I went for this really was because when I was doing it, it just looked too light. It was too powdery, too dusty, and it had lost that weighted look to it. And this is a real quick, easy way just to mottle things up and everything else. As you can see, or we will do in a moment, I'll get the, the light moving on this so we can get different shades. But once this starts to dry, it doesn't take too long at all. Okay, you can probably see it's going a little bit dark. <coughs> dark in some areas, light in others. You can see it probably catching it on the light there. And we'll say we want to get to around about 70% of this being dry. And then we can stop and do it. So if I just concentrate on this wing. So what we can start to do now is blow this around just a little bit. Okay, spider it off. And you see you make these holes and things. Okay, the first thing we want to do, that will do nicely. We've got our cloth here. We're just gonna grab the back end. We wanna make sure we've got none coming underneath because we don't wanna really do any more weathering under here. Okay, so we're just gonna take these areas and just clean off this excess which is coming down and under because really we're not interested in having any more on the bottom we're happy how the bottom is so we're stopped we don't have any mottling going on or anything else <coughs> so holding carefully because we've also got weapons fit on here all we're going to do to start with just give it a wipe dry and as you can see we're not getting too much off of this at all so that just make sure that's all dry in there right? then we're going to wet it And we're just going to really just stain it in a bit. So we'll do a wet pass and then coming in with a dry. Okay, so these rear ones down the back we're going to wet quite heavily because we want to clean them up. And then hopefully, what will happen is. Wet the cloth now, give this a buff. And as you can see, we're getting it where it's sort of darker, lighter, darker going on. Usual thing, just make sure you go in the direction of airflow for your last passes. Make sure you get in this wing route, so cotton bud. Good little pass in there, then a wipe down. And there we go, that thing now joins our other side <clears throat> with this great weathering all down here, and the wing sort of blends into it now, and it just gives us that all over mottled type of look to everything. So we can do the same on the other side. As you can see, if I do it like this, you see these patches happening here? This is where it's not wet, where it's wet underneath, and it's causing it to come away quite easily. And other areas, obviously, it has a hard time pulling off. And this way, you can get this great mottled look to your, your paintwork. <clears throat> this edge again because you don't want too much wash in the, the little cracks <clears throat> and there we go 
Hopefully you can see it down there. It's got that nice texture to it. Let me just bring this camera down. Hopefully you can see, and what it is, you can see the light difference on these. It's where it's wiping off of other areas and not in some areas, but you get this nice dirt and grime down on this area where we wanted it. Same on the other side. As you can see, it's nice and grimy, giving us that great effect and all over on the spine, really just blending it all in. So what we're going to do now is literally go around, we're going to get all the parts put onto this now, we get the tail planes actually glued in place, we put the dump valve back on, sorted all of that out, we can get the canopies all on, we can get the refueling probe actually fitted onto this. As you can see, oh, here's the other canopy. We've got the actual, the main tank underneath here is actually fitted in, so it's actually on its stand and everything else like that, and that'll really complete the work on the actual Phantom itself. Then all we've got to do is get it attached to the base. Okay, so as you can see, we've pushed on with this one quite a bit now, and really what we've done is just bring it all together. So as you can see, what we've actually got now is uh, both the crew members installed and the canopies on. We've put on this little tiny mirror on the top, which is, to be honest, is on just with a little bit of PVA glue. It's still a little bit soft. Okay, we've also tinted the front windscreen. Now, this is one of those things where, depending on how you look at it and how the light grabs it, you can see. Now, you might be able to see a little blue tint on here on the front. Perhaps not, but you can with a naked eye, trust me. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what I tend to do is I balance it. So what we actually had, I had a situation, a couple of pots. So this actual front windscreen is level, and then all it is is clear blue, um, which is Tamiya. This one here, which is XF23, thinned very heavily, and then just tap it and let it flow over the top. And just make sure it goes flows quite neatly. So thin it quite a lot, test it first. If you're happy, let it on there. And then it's one of the things, don't touch it. At the same time, we did the rear light on here uh, and we touched in the lights on the wingtips. We've installed the engine nozzles down here at the back. Metalizer paint, the same as we did the other area. And then it had a wash as well, and just buffed up with our finger. The weapons are actually all properly fitted in now and just tacked into place. Again, I was a great fan of using super glue, things like that, but as I'll show you a little bit later on, we talk about super glue in the reveal that um, probably not the best thing to use, to be honest. So for this particular one, I used white glue, um, to be honest, it's crystal clear, just to hold all the weapons in place. You'll find it holds them a lot better than using super glue, which can just ping off and obviously leave white marks. Refueling probe is done, again, white glue, uh, probably because it's got a little bit of movement in it and everything else like that. And that is really it, really brought together. The canopies aren't fixed, they are literally pushed in. Had to do a little bit of adjustment down here at this top edge, purely because it's not a brilliant fit. If it's open, no problem at all, but closed, you get little gaps all around it. So by doing that, it just takes care of it and pulls it all in. So really, that is the aircraft absolutely finished off. Um, personal choice on how you want to finish it, if you want to give it another flat coat right the way over. I've elected not to, so it's just got the wash, which obviously if you've got wet hands, you might have a problem. But what it does do, because it's got those different textures of uh, where we did the touch-ins with the post shading, it's a little bit more shiny, just gives it a little bit more feel to it. And personally, I do like the look of it. So, next up, we've got this big hole down the back which we put through for the fuel tank and in there we can see our bolt as what we wanted, or sorry, our nut in there. Now, we spoke about it before and at the time I didn't actually have the correct size here, but this is the size I'm going to be using. Now, this is 4.5mm. If you have got some digital calipers, they do come in quite handy for checking all these things because obviously you can double check your, your sizes. Okay, so we have our little calipers here and then all we do you can just come along and it's 4.53 close enough okay all right or 4.52 the important bit is the actual inside diameter so what we can do is we can just go in and then we can check our internals or hopefully we can check our internals okay and there we go showing as four I'm sure it's a little bit bigger than that I'm sure it should be 4.5 or 4 is in there. There we go. So that's four exactly, as you can see, flashing away in there, which is absolutely fine for what we want. We'll just turn that off, save the battery. Now, the great thing with this size now, it fits with our nuts and bolts we've been using because before when we did it, they were very, very loose in here. Now, these literally just go in and touch. Now, to be honest, I've already got it done to the side to show you, but all I actually did, we popped it in like that. Got some side cutters in particularly nice pink. Okay, so we put this in, and all we did was bite onto this 
just a little bit, just to give it some grip, and you'll notice then it actually will thread, so it will screw in. Now, the trouble is, if you just have it like that, when you put it in and screw in, you just know that it's gonna push the screw right the way through the other end, so we need it to lock into this. So actually, what I used was a tiny little bit of Loctite onto the thread and then screwed it in. Okay, you could use just super glue, PVA glue, probably steer away from, because you need something with a bit of bite, but by doing that, as you can see, you get quite a nice, you know, system where it sort of screws in and takes care. So by the time you've done it, and then obviously you cut it to your correct length you want to do, you'll end up something like this. A couple of crimps and it is in there pretty solid now. So now when we come along, we just poke this down in the hole and we can screw it in. Okay, and it screws in there and it is perfect, exactly what we need. But the trouble with this is, it's a bit of a pain for moving around, so that's why I don't fix it in. If you can take it to shows and that, it's easier to take it apart, lay that down somewhere and put it on. Next up, the stand. Okay, went on to good old eBay, lots of places around for it, and I found a very nice company, okay, and they do these plinths here. Now these plinths here are mahogany, polished and done, come in a nice box, in a very nice bag, very nicely protected and everything else, and now you're thinking, got a base base on the bottom of it and everything else like that and you're probably thinking right okay how much did you pay for that i actually paid the paltry sum of two pound 99 so there you go good old ebay every time for these types of things really really simple so next out went out we drilled a 4.5 millimeter hole in the middle got another one done just here okay it doesn't go all the way through now personal choice on this you might want to put another hole in here a little bit bigger and then that way perhaps you could put in a system so it does screw shut because you could countersink a slightly bigger hole so this goes in flush and then even perhaps you could pop in to make sure you don't get any pull through or anything else like that, like a washer, and then this end would then come in from the top and you could screw it in. Probably a nice way of doing it. For us, perhaps a little bit over overkill. So what we've actually got, let me just move that, is our system where this guy, if I put this end in first, it works a lot better. Okay, we're just gonna screw him into there. You don't have to screw it in all the way because this way you can give it a little bit of twist and movement and you should find that this, because it's 4.5 millimeter, is an absolute perfect fit of which it is. So if we carefully show, so now it goes in the bottom just like that. A couple of things. If you're gonna polish the brass section on the bottom, please be careful, okay, because you'll get that green stuff comes off when you polish brass or copper, anything else like that, all right? Then you touch your model and then it really is good night Vienna because it is extremely hard to get that off, all right? So trust me, this is something I did a few years ago. I polished one of these completely. I thought it was fine and then I handled it. You get this sort of greeny tinge, uh, brown gray tinge on your fingers grab the model and then it was a real pain because it wouldn't come off, okay? No matter of scrubbing or anything, can you get it off? It got right down into the paint because it's got this copper, um, it was a copper one I used last time, it put it in there, but brass is exactly the same and obviously this is brass. So if you are gonna polish it up, polish it up, no problem, and just make sure it's got it all off of it before you handle it because trust me, you really don't want it on your model. But there we have it, that is it, it is simple as that. Now, originally, what I was gonna do was put in a refueling basket into here, coming off so it looked like it was doing air to air refueling. Slightly changing my plans on this, because I intend to actually do the VF and the VFC Triple uh, One Squadron as an airborne diorama all in flight. So I intend to do uh, the F-14, obviously, which actually flew this one, perhaps even the Crusader, because the Crusader was in these markings, uh, and then certainly we're gonna be doing the Aggressor Squadrons, which are now known as VFC Triple One, okay? And they actually fly the F-5 uh, single seat and two seat versions of those. Again, all of them have the Sundowner's tail, and obviously the shark's mouth on the front and everything else like that. That is my plan for this particular one and what I intend to do with it. And that is roughly about it. It's a bit of a pain when it's up on this because I can't show it off on camera. But it does give you a very nice in-flight display. And I have to say, I do love the Phantom in the in-flight display. It's one of those things, it's one of these aircraft that really looks good in the air, opposed to, as you can see, down here on the floor. It's been a great build, really, really enjoyed this one. Got a bit carried away with the weathering near the end, but um, that's just me, the way I am. Really, we haven't had this kit before. We have, don't get me wrong, because we'll talk about it in a moment. We've got the Hasegawa one down here from a previous build, but this is the first time we've actually had a recessed panel line version, because before it was the old Hasegawa one with raised panel lines, we had to go around and rescribe everything, which was particularly a pain in the rear. Okay, now we've got something, recessed panel lines that go with it and everything else. What I'm gonna do is just take it off the stand just for a moment, because 
I want to do a nice side by side comparison. Let me go in the right way. There we are. Okay, but it really has been great. The level of detail of this kit is far superior to the Hasegawa ones. The only thing I don't like at all is these intakes because I particularly find, I don't know if the camera will get there, but you might be able to see just down in this one down here, you've got that lip at the back. It follows the same way that the Tamiya um, 132nd kit does it. Again, doesn't work on that one either. So really, if you're going to be doing something like this, maybe a seamless set of intakes would be a better way to go. Now, I haven't used them on this. I have to say, as you can probably see down here these particularly fit extremely well we've got no seam lines and joins and problems to put them on they do fit well I'm not sure if the new resin ones how they go in there I'm led to believe they're very nice but then who knows but that is my only qualm with the kit at all things I like about it first the price beautiful price for this particular kit secondly the amount of you get in the box you get a full weapons load with this one with all the side winders you also get all the chins for this particular one because the B version like this it does have go through quite a few that's why you'll see some bees they have a slightly different tail they don't have the lump at the front here some of them have um, little uh, the uh, early warning receivers uh, on the actual sides of the intakes things like that so really it is a personal thing to each aircraft there was so much development when this one was around and being pushed forward and everything else so there really is a lot of change so we have to do it okay obviously our latest build par one of our very old ones and this one over here is many many moons old now Okay, um, really, what can you say? The difference between the two, looking at them on a side by side comparison, if we just pull the camera out just a little bit, we've got them both down here. The things that jump out immediately with you, we always sort of thought the Hasegawa kit was lovely. Obviously, this is the J version, so they are different, all right. Recess panel lining was very nice, okay. The new one is a finer recess, these are quite trenchy compared to these. Other differences, we can see straight away down here, this one we've got no riveting detail whatsoever, yet on the other one we are absolutely covered in it. So certainly for you guys who want to go out and do, if we just bring these in we can show you what I mean, but immediately you can see on these wing tips, you can see the difference. We've got all this riveting down here, we've got none really on here. Now I know these are different aircraft, they did have different wings, this one's got the bump and everything else, but certainly as you can see by the level of detail running around these wings, it is far superior. The Hasegawa kit is a lovely kit, although personally I think compared to the new Academy one, it's a little bit overpriced. You can see on the bottom, pretty basic versus very nicely detailed again some of the things this one particularly has got um, aftermarket engines in it and everything else like that so don't take any notice these ones in here got full length engines already I wouldn't really worry about aftermarket you're not going to see them too much at all but certainly for a new kit to come along and steal the Hasegawa crown was going to be a tall order because we all love this kit it goes together very very well with no problems at all I can say categorically this one has done the trick. It's a far superior kit. It's a lot more detailed. It goes together a lot better. Things I don't like about it, the wing folds, the way it goes up for the up position, things like that. You know, don't particularly like that, but you didn't even get the option on the Hassel Gap, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and there's a few little gripes with it. As I say, the intakes are my first one. My second one is, you know, some of the joins and things like that. They take a little bit of work to get together for a modern kit, but really nothing more than you'd ever expect on the Hasegawa one. I really, really enjoyed doing this one. It's one of those ones where I get carried away with, which is always a good sign, because if I get carried away with it, it means I'm really, really enjoying it. It's a fantastic kit. It's been a fantastic build. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And if you have, join me again next time. Thank you.